Hare Krishna, today we are reading from Sri Raja Mandala Parikrama, Kamyavan, pastime places in Kamyavan. One day when the Pandavas and Draupadi were living here in Dharmakund during their exile, Maharani Draupadi went alone to take bath in Vimalakund. Meanwhile, the Pandavas were at their residence, free of anxieties and deeply absorbed in narrations about the Supreme Lord. Jayadratha, the brother-in-law of both Duryodhana and the Pandavas, was attracted to Draupadi. He was waiting for an opportunity to find Draupadi alone so he could kidnap her easily. In this way, he would dishonor the Pandavas. On this day, fate had it that he found Draupadi alone bathing in Vimalakund away from her residence. Jayadratha tried to take Draupadi with him to his kingdom by threat and guile, but Draupadi, the crest jewel of chaste ladies, firmly refused. This made Jayadratha furious and he forcefully pulled her up on his, to his chariot and drove the horses very fast. Draupadi started loudly calling out to Arjuna, Bhima and Krishna for protection. Somehow, her loud cries reached the ears of Arjuna and Bhima, and the two mighty warriors immediately ran after the chariot with great speed. The great warrior Arjuna, who single-handedly could face up to 10,000 opponents at one time, stopped Jayadratha's chariot by shooting arrows of fire at it. Jayadratha jumped from the chariot and fled for his life, but Bhima outran him and caught him. Both brothers submitted Jayadratha before Draupadi and then the three of them went before Maharaja Yudhishthira. Bhima was furious. This criminal should be killed immediately. Arjuna supported Bhima. However, Dharmaraja Yudhishthira pacified them both. This degraded person has committed an offence at the feet of Draupadi, he said. Therefore, she should choose a suitable punishment for him. Draupadi then gravely spoke. Needless to say, he has committed a horrible crime. Yet, he is your sister's husband. I do not want to see my sister-in-law cry for the rest of her life as a widow. It is therefore best to release him. Bhima, however, was intent on having him killed. They finally concluded that for a respectable person, dishonor is equal to death and therefore Jayadratha would have his head shaven clean, but in such a way as to give him five tufts of hair. Similarly, before releasing him, they would shave his face, leaving only a beard. Bhima shaved Jayadratha's head and face as planned, thereby dishonouring him. He then released him. Jayadratha went away greatly insulted and performed severe austerities with the aim of being able to kill the Pandavas. However, Arjuna killed him in the Mahabharata war by following the instructions of Sri Krishna. The wicked Duryodhana was always anxious to destroy the Pandavas completely. Once, while the Pandavas and Draupadi were living here during the exile, he invited Maharishi Durvasa and fed him a sumptuous, delicious meal with great honour. Durvasa was satisfied and requested Duryodhana to ask for a boon. With folded hands, Duryodhana said, Maharaja Yudhishthira is my elder brother. Please accept his hospitality and go to his residence with your, with your 60,000 disciples, but go in the afternoon. The Pandavas are currently living in Kamyavana. Duryodhana knew well that the Pandavas served their guests with extreme care. Draupadi had a pot that had been given to her by Surya Deva. The cooking done in that one pot could feed innumerable persons to their satisfaction. But as soon as Draupadi had eaten and cleaned the pot, it could provide no more food until she cooked again. Draupadi would feed any guests as well as the Pandavas and then clean the pot without fail before the afternoon. Durvasa and his 60,000 disciples were to arrive there in the afternoon, so the Pandavas would not be able to feed them. Duryodhana hoped that the very hot-tempered Durvasa Rishi would curse the Pandavas and burn them to ashes. 
Maharishi Durvasa was fully aware of the glories of the Pandavas, who were devotees of Sri Krishna. However, it is difficult for even the demigods to understand his contrary activities. Only he knows what, when and why he does what he does. Thus he and the 60,000 sages reach the residence of the Pandavas in Kamevana in the afternoon. Upon seeing him, the Pandavas became very happy. Maharaja Yudhishthira worshipped him and requested him to accept his hospitality. Maharishi said, We are now going to bathe in Vimalakund and will come back very soon. You should arrange for our meals. We will eat here. Saying this, the Rasa left to bathe together with his whole entourage. The Pandavas now became very concerned. What arrangement could be made to feed, feed these sages? They called Draupadi and asked her if she could arrange to feed a gathering of 60,000. But her pot had already been cleaned and turned upside down. She considered hard what to do to save the Pandavas, but could not think of a plan. At last, she began calling out to her dear friend Sri Krishna in a voice filled with distress. How could Dwarakanatha not come upon hearing her call? He immediately appeared in front of Draupadi and said, Sakhi, I am very hungry. Give me something to eat. Draupadi answered, You are hungry and I have nothing at home. My pot has been cleaned and is lying upside down. The extremely hot-tempered Maharishi Durvasa, together with the 60,000 disciples, are about to come to take their meal. When he finds that there is nothing to eat, he will definitely annihilate the Pandavas. Therefore, first please arrange for them to be fed. Sri Krishna said, I cannot do anything without eating and drinking, so please bring your pot. In a sad voice, Draupadi said, There is nothing in the pot. I have cleaned it very thoroughly. Still you bring it. I want to see. Draupadi brought the pot and put it in Krishna's hands. Krishna looked into it and became joyful. A very tiny piece of leafy vegetable was stuck to the side of the pot. Sri Krishna scraped it off with his nail and put it in his mouth. He then filled his stomach with water poured by Draupadi's hands. Triptosmi, triptosmi. I am satisfied, I am satisfied, he exclaimed, and he began to pat his stomach with his hand. He even belched in satisfaction. Sri Krishna then sent Bhima Sena to quickly go and call the sages. The great warrior Bhima, club in hand, started towards Vimalakund. Maharishi Durvasa and his disciples had been bathing in Vimalakund when they suddenly their stomachs fell completely full. They all started belching as if they had eaten a meal. When Durvasa saw Bhima coming towards them, the memory of the incident with Ambarisha Maharaja entered his mind and he became frightened. He and his 60,000 disciples quickly fled to Maharishi Loka through the celestial pathways. Upon arriving at Vimalakund, Bhima could not find the sages anywhere. He returned and told Maharaja Yudhishthira and Sri Krishna, I searched everywhere but could not find them. After learning what had happened from Sri Krishna, Draupadi and the Pandavas became free from anxiety. If Sri Krishna is satisfied, then the whole universe is satisfied. This is indeed this episode's message to the world. This pastime of Sri Krishna took place here at Kamevan. Another time, while the Pandavas were residing here, the wicked Duryodhana discovered their whereabouts and descended upon Kamevan with all his brothers, associates like Karna and Shakuni, relatives, friends, and an army of four divisions. For some days, he set up a very festive camp on the bank of Vimalakund just to humiliate the Pandavas. When Indra came to know of this, he ordered his general Chitrasena to arrest Duryodhana. Chitrasena defeated Duryodhana's entire army, arrested him and took him to Indra by the aerial pathways. Duryodhana loudly shouting and screaming all the while. Yudhishthira Maharaja heard his crying and ordered Bhimasena to rescue him. But Bhimasena objected. Maharaja, Duryodhana wanted to harm us, which is why our best well-wisher Chitrasena has caught him and is taking him away. It is best if we remain quiet. Maharaja Yudhishthira could not tolerate this. He looked at Arjuna and said, 
brother Arjuna, our brother Suryodhana, a name of Duryodhana used by Maharaja Yudhishthira, is in danger, and it is our duty to rescue him. We can quarrel and fight among ourselves over over some issue, but when com when it comes to others, we had one hundred five brothers are one. Quickly rescue Suryodhana. The mighty warrior Arjuna easily released Duryodhana from the hands of Chitrasena, the general of the demigods, and with his arrows brought him down to stand before Maharaja Yudhishthira. He met Duryodhana da very affectionately and respectfully set him back to his place of residence. But the blackness of coal does not go away even if the coal is washed millions of times with soap. The affectionate behavior of Maharaja Yudhishthira. Pierced Duryodhana's heart like a sharp iron rod. He considered himself dishonored and returned to Hastinapura highly agitated. Whoever God protects, no one can harm. Indeed, no one can so much as twist a single hair of someone who is under Sri Krishna's shelter. Nearby at Panchatirtha Sarovara were some amazing deities of the Pandavas and Draupadi. This place is uninhabited, and therefore a thief was able to steal a few of the deities here some time ago, while others were broken. Since then, the remaining deities have been kept in the nearby temple of Kameshwara Mahadev, where they are neglected. Dharma Kupa, Dharma Kund, and many other places that seem to be connected with the Pandavas lie close by. Thank you, Hare Krishna.